Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chemicals from Aromatic Compounds Phenol. First we have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous lecture of this particular chapter which is on uh, chemicals from aromatics. We started discussing on uh, listing out what are the main aromatics which can be used as raw material for uh, production of uh, different types of uh, synthetic chemicals where we listed out like uh, benzene, toluene, xylene and then naphthalene are the ones which are uh, important aromatics from which we can produce a number of different types of synthetic chemicals, right. So, if you have these things you can produce uh, different types of chemicals, but how to produce them, this uh, raw material itself how to produce them because they are not available naturally in the uh, uh, nature, okay, you have to produce them as well, right. For that. Uh, uh, we listed out there are two sources, coal and then oil are the two sources from the oil different methods that we have already seen in the previous couple of chapters where we have done uh, different types of uh, steam cracking operations etc. When we do that, when we, we can get uh, uh, sometimes you know different types of aromatics along with the other components as well. Like coal also, you know when you do the carbonation of the coal, so then we get the uh, volatiles which may be having the uh, tari components also, you can uh, take off those uh, tari components from the volatiles by uh, electrostatic precipitators, then whatever the uh, volatiles are there that you can do the subsequent processing like you know uh, treating with the H2SO4 and other fractionating kind of processes, then you can get a fraction which is uh, you know completely having the aromatics, okay. So, uh, the aromatics that we produce by different uh, sources of oil, uh, then we get almost equivalent uh, percentage of uh, yield of uh, B, T and X, whereas when we uh, did uh, carbonation of uh, coal to get uh, aromatics, then we realized that the percentage of B is very high, uh, substantially high approximately 60 percent, whereas this percent of uh, T and X are something like you know. 7 to 12 percent or something like that, one of the components are even 4 percent, such low percentages we get uh, uh, you know from the coal. That is basically from the coal you can get more of the uh, benzene whereas from the oil you can get you know, you know all three components benzene, toluene, xylene in almost equivalent uh, fractions. Production of aromatics from coal and oil that is whatever just now we discussed, so those processes we have discussed. Then we listed out different types of chemicals and intermediates, those can be prepared or manufactured by using these aromatics as raw materials, uh, the big list we have seen. So, that gives the importance of these aromatics to produce different types of uh, synthetic chemicals, right. Then uh, we also discussed you know properties and end uses of uh, these types of these four uh, different types of aromatics. Then uh, first we discussed the production of uh, benzene by hydro dealkylation process through standard way of uh, properties, flow chart and major engineering problems, consumption pattern etc. Right? Then we started discussing on the production of uh, phenol synthetic chemical from aromatics. So, before uh, discussing uh, methods of production we have discussed its uh, protein properties etc. Then we listed out uh, different possible methods of uh, production of phenol you know uh, using aromatics are the raw materials. There are a number of methods are available, but six are very competitive uh, economically, techno economically six processes are competitive, those are listed below that is cumin peroxide hydrolysis process, toluene two stage oxidation process, rashic vapor phase hydrochlorination and hydrolysis process and then chlorobenzene caustic hydrolysis process, then benzene sulfonate caustic fusion process and then finally benzene direct oxidation process. Now out of these six methods, this method or this method to produce phenol we have seen in detail as we have been discussing for any component. Now we are going to discuss the production of phenol by this method that is tall in two stage oxidation. After completing this we are also going to discuss how to produce phenol by all these remaining processes as well. As the name uh, suggests two stage oxidation process, in this process you know oxidation is taking place at two different stages, okay. So why are we using toluene? Because it is uh, a very good aromatic, but uh, 
from the applications point of view, we have found that it is being produced in large quantities that uh, its end uses are limited and then we are not able to consume all of this toluene. For that reason, you know, um, different uh, other options are there. One of the options is that convert this toluene into the benzene and then try to get different types of end products. So likewise, you can also convert this toluene into the phenol because phenol is also having good number of applications. So that process we are discussing here. We start with the chemical reactions. First one is the oxidation of toluene to benzoic acid. That is, you take a uh, toluene and then react with oxygen at 150 degree centigrade in the presence of a cobalt naphthenate catalyst. Then you will get benzoic acid and water, right. This benzoic acid, if you further do the oxidation, then you get phenol as per the reaction given here. So that is benzoic acid reacting with oxygen at 200 degree centigrade in the presence of cupric benzoate catalyst, you will get the phenol, okay. Along with this one, you also get some CO2, right. So now, quantitative requirements, if you want to produce 1 ton of phenol with 80 percent yield, then toluene you required 1.34 tons and then air you required 8.8 .8 tons, whereas the catalyst cobalt naphthenate and then cupric benzoate catalyst traces are quantity sufficient whatever uh, is required that you have to take. Then capacities 35 to 75 tons per day plants are very common using this particular process to produce phenol, right. So in this process actually the phenol converting into the benzoic acid by oxygen in the presence of this catalyst cobalt naphthenate at 150 degree centigrade, you know uh, conversion is limited only up to the 40 percent only. If not, so many other kind of you know byproducts like benzaldehyde etc. would also be forming. So then subsequent purification would become very difficult. That is the reason in this uh, first reaction the oxidation of toluene is uh, restricted so that the conversion of toluene is taking place only 40 percent and then that would be uh, accomplished by using the excess of uh, you know oxygen, right. So even though here 40 percent of uh, uh, toluene conversion is taking place or you are limiting to convert only 40 percent of toluene, you get you know more than 90 percent of uh, uh, benzoic acid uh, yield, right. So here also this benzoic acid uh, is oxidized uh, with excess of oxygen, excess of oxygen so that you know you know uh, sufficient more than uh, you know uh, 90 percent or 80 percent yield of uh, phenol will take place. But however, when you take the overall yield, then that yield would be 80 percent, okay. Now this is the flow chart for the production of a phenol uh, from the toluene by two step oxidation process. So what we do first here, we take a toluene, fresh one as well as the uh, recycled one within the process whichever unreacted toluene is there that we recover and then recycle back to the reactor, right. So this is a uh, liquid phase reactor, continuous steel tank kind of reactor. To this reactor along with the catalyst whatever uh, cobalt uh, naphthenate catalyst is there that one toluene are uh, sent to the uh, this liquid phase reactor and then to this reactor from the bottom air is being circulated. From the bottom air is being circulated because we want oxidation of the toluene to take place. Right? You can take directly oxygen also if it is available but it is not required. You can take air okay? rather taking oxygen so that would be sufficient. You do not need to spend too much of uh, money on uh, purifying this air to get only oxygen. Okay? Now from this reactor from the top what you get? You get uh, you know uh, water vapors and then there would be some uh, unreacted toluene etc. would be there. So that make sure you take it to a condenser condense this water and then take it as a waste or you know for the utilization in uh, within the process if it is required. Whereas the unreacted toluene you feed back to the reactor. Whereas the from the bottom primarily the liquid whatever that you are getting because it is a liquid phase reactor. So here you are maintaining the temperature of 150 degree centigrade 
right and then you are using this particular catalyst so then after the reaction some of them would also be there in the vapor phase so those you condense and then take out as water non condensable gases like nitrogen etc you take out to vent whereas the unreacted toluin you feed back to the reactor by this partial reflex and then condenser whereas the liquid product from the bottom you get that is mostly uh, would be having the uh, benzoic acid all right crude benzoic acid plus uh, some amount of unreacted toluene as well okay now here uh, before doing this uh, uh, you know taking this uh, liquid solution like you know benzoic acid plus toluene mixture to the uh, fractionator what you have here whatever this partial condenser that you are using from here you know not only the unreacted toluene some of the products are also being sent back to the reactor that depends on the how much conversion you need in this case particularly we don't need much of the toluene conversion to take place it should not be more than 40 percent so it has to be carefully operated okay whereas from the bottom whatever the liquids are there they would be having uh, benzoic acid and toluene mixture so then toluene you can collect from the top because it is a uh, high volatile component compared to the benzoic acid. So toluene you get in the top column, condense it and then some of it you can take it back to the uh, fractionator uh, in order to improve the separation and then remaining one is the, you can recycle back to the reactor along with the catalyst and then fresh toluene. Whereas from the uh, bottom whatever you get that is primarily having the benzoic acid though it is not completely pure benzoic acid, it, it basically it would be crude benzoic acid it, that would be washed with uh, hot water to remove any heavy ends etc. that may be present in the benzoic acid because the purity of benzoic acid is going to dictate the purity of the final phenol that you are going to uh, get because the uh, phenol you are getting from the benzoic acid oxidation process that is second stage oxidation process. So for that purpose what you do this benzoic acid is washed with the hot water to remove the heavy ends then uh, whatever the uh, crude benzoic acid is there that would be crystallized and sent to uh, vacuum filtration process where wash water is used to remove the impurities and then benzoic acid is collected right. So this benzoic acid uh, itself you can take as a product and then do subsequent purification if you are looking for the benzoic acid product otherwise uh, as in this process we are producing uh, phenol so this would be further melted using a uh, heat exchange then mixed with the catalyst here which catalyst are we using we are using cupric benzoate catalyst we are using and then temperature is roughly 200 degree centigrade is maintained in this reactor. This is also a uh, continuous steel tank kind of reactor. To this reactor from the top benzoic acid, uh, melted benzoic acid mixed with the catalyst is being fed from the bottom air and then steam are being supplied. So both of them are supplied or only air may be supplied for the oxidation to take place. Now here after taking the oxidation you get primarily you know uh, phenol plus uh, unreacted benzoic acid and then CO2 etc would also be there because in this process CO2 would also be forming. So that uh, reaction mixture whatever is there that you take to a fractionator column where you maintain operating conditions such a way that from the top you get the CO2, N2 etc gases from the top after passing through condenser they will be taken out as a vent. Whereas in that vapor if at all uh, some, the, some of the product mixture or unreacted uh, you know benzoic acid etc is there that would be fed back to the fractionator okay. From the bottom what you do you get uh, you know uh, unreacted benzoic acid if at all it is present more in the product stream so that you, you, you can collect from the bottom and then send back it to the second stage oxidation reactor. This is the second stage oxidation reactor and then this is the first stage oxidation reactor. Right. So this way the benzoic acid recycling you can do it whereas from the bottom of the oxidation uh, uh, reactor second stage oxidation reactor you can get the tarry heavy kind heavy and so you may be getting that you can wash with the water and then collect as tar you can check its contents and then if it is required you can recycle as well right. So after cooling and then passing through this uh, separator 
uh, where you are separating the vent gases like CO2, N2, etc. Then what you have you may be having you know uh, water phenol mixture primarily because water is forming in this reactor and then CO2 is forming in this uh, reactor and then water is forming in the first reactor though most of the water we remove. Subsequently we are doing washing with water and other kind of things so then some water may also be there. So that you know here what you do the uh, water phenol mixture you take it to a fractionator where uh, water is removed and then phenol is collected which is again crude phenol rather saying the crude phenol actually phenol is forming isotrope with water so that mixture you whatever is there that you take back to the you know another final fractionator right this crude phenol you take to the another final fractionator where you get the phenol pure phenol as the bottom product whereas the uh, water contents along with some fractions of phenol you can collect from the top. You can uh, do the uh, required separation if required otherwise you can send back it to the uh, previous fractionator where you know water phenol are being separated. So the purification of phenol is taking place in two stages because water phenol are forming azeotropes here. Okay. This is the process overall process if you see this process details in the text form then what you have. What we realize from this process is the two stage oxidation process so two reactors are required right and then so many purification steps are required. So then obviously capital cost is going to be higher for this particular uh, process because of such reasons if you see the capacities of such plants is very less 35 to 75 tons only because so many of the operations are involved not only two reactor but also so many separation processes are involved. So it is going to be uh, economically better if you can uh, develop a process which can convert toluene to phenol in one, one single step but however there are no such processes available until now which are commercial. Coming to the process description it is a two stage oxidation process in the first stage fresh plus recycled toluene mixed with a small quantity of cobalt naphthenate catalyst. This mixture charged to a reactor which is a liquid filled tower through which air is passed from the bottom. Reactor is provided with cooling tubes to remove exothermic heat of the reaction. Reactor is running at 150 degrees centigrade and 3 atmosphere. Excess air is used but toluene conversion is limited up to 40 percent to avoid excessive side reactions because these side reactions give byproducts such as benzaldehyde, benzyl alcohol, benzyl benzoate, CO, CO2. So separation of these kind of aromatics again will require lot of you know, you know process unit operations etc. So capital cost again may increase subsequently you know operational cost would also be increasing. So you know for that purpose we are limiting toluene conversion only up to 40 percent though we are supplying the excess air for this reaction to occur. With this conversion of toluene one can obtain 90 percent yield of benzoic acid though 40 percent uh, toluene is uh, allowed to convert you get 90 percent of the benzoic acid yield. Off gases from reactor are vented through a water cooled condenser to remove water and to allow return of uh, toluene. Liquid from reactor continuously passes to distillation column which strips toluene and other volatile byproducts from acid fractions in the bottoms. Purified benzoic acid is separated by extracting the bottoms with hot water then crystallizing and filtering the crude benzoic acid so that to get it purified it. To produce a, a phenol from crude benzoic acid it is melted mixed with cupric benzoate catalyst then charged to a passed cooling tubes and mechanical agitation. Reactor conditions are 220 degree centigrade and then pressure is 1.3 to 1.7 atmospheres. Excess air is necessary to get 70 to 80 percent conversion of benzoic acid with a yield of 90 percent phenol right. Overall process yield of two steps is about 80 percent only. Phenol is obtained by continuously distilling a reactor liquor into a fractionating column where unreacted benzoic acid is returned to reactor. Non-condensable gases such as N2O2 and CO2 are vented through a condenser along with condensable fractions of phenol water. 
Phenol is withdrawn as a bottom layer in a separator. This crude phenol is again fractionated with a purified phenol coming off as bottoms whereas the overhead phenol water azeotrope sent to another column for splitting. Heavy ends in benzoic acid oxidation tower are water extracted to recover phenol and benzoic acid. These are then recycled after concentration and to the second stage oxidation tower as well. Major engineering problems alternatives, major design problems are efficient gas liquid contacting uh, design because oxidation reaction is required, toluene liquid is interacting with the air uh, which is in the gaseous form. Okay. Economic recovery of organics from water containing fractions in the second stage is also one important uh, design problem to consider. Economics of process, incentives for switching to toluene as an aromatic source comes from oversupply of a toluene available at low cost uh, from petroleum reforming. Major disadvantages are two stage oxidation with handling of solid intermediate, not only two stage uh, gas liquid uh, reactors are required, but in between also you need to ha have a uh, you know provision to handle uh, solids, intermediate solids which are nothing but benzoic acids benzoic acid crystals whatever you are getting. So, that is also one of the disadvantages and fairly elaborate process scheme throughout. We have seen the flow, flow chart so big so many unit operations are involved to get the you know process done along with the two reactors. Development of a simpler single step oxidation of toluene would be a major breakthrough in synthetic phenol production. Okay, That is all uh, production of phenol by oxidation of toluene in two stages. Now we discuss Rashig phenol process which is also known as a you know hydrochlorination of benzene process. Chemical reactions, first uh, hydrochlorination of benzene uh, to be carried out that is benzene reacting with a HCl and then oxygen at 240 degrees centigrade in the presence of a ferric chloride or cupric chloride or mixture of these two ca as catalyst. Okay. So, as catalyst you can use ferric chloride uh, or cupric chloride or both of them can be added to get a chlorobenzene and then here water is forming. So, excessive water is being forming here so that after this reaction in a reactor you should have a provision to remove this water as much as possible. Then this uh, chlorobenzene would be undergoing hydrolysis where it is reacting with the water at 350 degrees centigrade in the presence of silica catalyst or calcium phosphate is also used as a catalyst. Okay. So, when this uh, hydrolysis of a chlorobenzene takes place you get the phenol and then HCl. Coming to the quantitative requirements to produce 1 ton of phenol at 75 percent yield, benzene 1.1 tons required, HCl 0.19 tons required, air 2.4 tons required because hydrochlorination uh, is taking place not only with HCl but also it is uh, required oxygen. Plant capacities usually 100 to 400 tons per day. Now, this is the process we have. Here what we are doing? We are uh, taking this uh, purified uh, benzene into a hydrochlorination uh, reactor to which air and then make up HCl along with the recycled HCl are being supplied from the bottom of the reactor. Okay. So, when this uh, air, HCl and then uh, benzene interact in this reactor, this reactor is having the catalyst FeCl3 or Cu. Cl2 or both of them and then this reaction is taking place at around 250, 240 degrees centigrade. So, temperature is maintained around this temperature. So, from here you get the chlorobenzene and then there would also be some water and then chloropolybenzenes also or uh, you know polychlorobenzenes should also be forming. right? So, such mixture is taken to a fractionator which is a distillation column. Now, here temperature pressure you maintain such a way that the lighter or more volatile chlorobenzene whatever is there that you can get it as a top product after partially condensing it 
whereas the heavier uh, polychlorobenzene components whatever are forming especially benzene dichloride etc or dichlorobenzene etc these kind of components you know they would be heavier compared to the crude monochlorobenzene so those heavier are collected from the bottom as a wastes right so here uh, in the organic chemistry this phi symbol is usually used to represent c6 h5 functional it's not a component whatever the benzyl c6 h5 uh, radicals are forming that is represented by phi so let us phenol c6 h5 oh so that phenol is written phi oh like this monochlorobenzene c6 h5 cl so that is written as phi cl so phi stands for c6 h5 right so that crude uh, monochlorobenzene is there that you can purify and then do the subsequent uh, reaction that is the process because this uh, monochlorobenzene is only being hydrolyzed to get the phenol whereas the dichlorobenzene or other polychlorobenzenes are not required so then they should be discarded from the bottom as a heavier component okay some of the uh, top product is also recycled back to the you know fractionator which is a standard pro process that is uh, partial recycle this we will do in order to improve the purity of the product we are uh, looking for okay so once you get this uh, monochlorobenzene that you take to a scrubber right so here monochlorobenzene is being scrubbed with phenol is being scrubbed with phenol so that to get a pure or purified monochlorobenzene from the top right so that you can take it to the hydrolysis reactor whereas from the bottom of the scrubber you may be getting you know uh, so called uh, benzene h2o mixture etc that would be taken to another scrubber where you recover the phenol from the water because in the scrubber what are you doing you are using recirculating water H2O for this for scrubbing purpose. So from this mixture of phenol and water what you, you get you get phenol separated out and then that is sent back to the extractor uh, you know where it, it is being extracted with the benzene that we will see subsequently from the bottom what you get you get the water in that water you take it to the hydrolysis reactor in which purified monochlorobenzene is being supplied. So here what are you doing, uh, we, which catalyst you are using, SiO2 or calcium phosphate uh, catalyst you are using here in this reactor and then temperature is 350 degrees centigrade is maintained so that the hydrolysis of monochlorobenzene takes place and then you get the phenol and then you get the uh, you know required uh, phenol right that phenol you can use it to scrub out the monochloro uh, phenol whatever the crude monochloro uh, phenol is there for scrubbing of that one you are using this uh, you know phenol from here okay from the hydrolysis reactor because it is crude one okay from the top what are you getting you are getting HCl vapors etc so those you can recycle and then send it back to the hydrochlorination reactor right so after this uh, scrubber second stage scrubber where you are separating out uh, mostly phenol that phenol is interacting with the benzene right in an, in an extractor to get a mixture of uh, benzene and phenol that is being sent to another fractionator distillation column so that from the top you can get the uh, more volatile benzene as the product top product and that purified benzene you can use it in the hydrochlorination reactor whereas from the bottom of this fractionator you will be getting phenol right that you can take to the phenol purification uh, column and then from here you maintain temperature pressure such a way that you know more volatile uh, you know waste etc would be separated out from the top whereas the heavier phenol would be collected as a bottom product pure phenol you collect as a bottom product from the bottom of the phenol purification distillation column okay so this is the flow chart for this process now if you see the description this process has a two vapor phase catalytic stages 
Purified benzene is fed to heated packed reactor containing FeCl3 and CuCl2 catalyst. Chlorination with HClO2 at 220 degree centigrade occurs with a short residence time with a 10 to 20 percent conversion of benzene. Fractionation separates unreacted benzene from chlorobenzene and then polychlorobenzene. Crude chlorobenzene is scrubbed with phenol, water washed and sent to second catalytic stage. In this stage it is hydrolyzed in a tubular high temperature furnace with either SiO2 or calcium phosphate as catalyst. Then phenol from hydrolyzer is washed with water then extracted with benzene and finally purified by two stage distillation column. Hydrochloric acid vapor from high temperature catalytic hydrolyzer is recycled to hydrochlorination stage. Coming to the major engineering problems or alternatives, one important thing is design of reactor conditions to minimize polychlorobenzenes, mainly dichlorobenzenes because these, these are impurities if these, these are presented the hydrolysis of uh, chlorobenzene will not take place to produce the phenol. Other problem is the corrosion from HCl, wet HCl, wherever the acids or you know chlorinated compounds are there, so then usually corrosion may occur if the temperature is high, okay. Thus ceramic or dury run construction is required, whereas the design of reactor conditions to minimize uh, polychlorobenzenes can be accomplished by low residence time and then low conversion within economic balance involving recycle cost. Economics of the process, because of corrosion and high temperature vapor phase reactions, plant investment for a RASIC process is 15 to 20 percent higher than other competitive processes at same output capacity. This is a disadvantage of uh, this process. Thus, only large continuously operated units are economically feasible. However, units can be located without regard for low materials as only benzene and then make up HCl are needed. Only byproducts are polychlorobenzenes which is advantageous. If you have too many byproducts then separation units increases that increases the cost. That is all about a RASIC process to produce the phenol. Now we discuss phenol production by chlorobenzene caustic process as the name indicate in this process chlorination of benzene as well as the you know whatever the products are forming causticizing those products is going to produce phenol. So what we do first we see the process by the reactions. So first reaction is the chlorination reaction. Here benzene is reacting with the chlorine at 85 degree centigrade either using direct iron or iron chloride or ferric chloride as catalyst to get the chlorobenzene. In the previous process in order to get the chlorobenzene we used HCl now we are using directly Cl2. Right. Then this chlorobenzene undergoes causticizing, causticizing by NaOH aqueous solution to give sodium benzoate. This sodium benzoate would, un, would be undergoing hydrolysis using HCl to give phenol and then NaCl. Okay. Quantitative requirements, 1 ton of phenol at 95 percent yield if you want to produce, benzene 0.9 tons, chlorine 0.82 tons required whereas 100 percent basis NaOH 0.67 tons and then HCl 0.51 tons required. Plant capacity is 100 to 400 tons per day. Okay, coming to the flow chart of uh, phenol production by chlorobenzene caustic process. What we have? We have a chlorinator reactor which is maintained at 85 degree centigrade. To this reactor benzene along with the catalyst are being fed. Catalyst can be iron or iron chloride. In this chlorinator reactor Cl2 is already supplied, right? So that whatever the benzene chlorination is taking place and then you can get a chlorobenzene from the side stream as a product and then you may also get some kind of uh, vapors like HCl etc. So those vapors you know you uh, do the partial condensation and then if at all unreacted benzene or some of the uh, product mixtures are there so they would be fed back to the chlorinator again whereas the some of the HCl is also being taken to HCl off gas 
from the chlorinator to subsequent steps for the neutralization purpose. This chlorobenzene whatever we produce from the chlorinator is mixed with sodium hydroxide to undergo some kind of caustization reaction subsequently. But here we also add diphenyl oxide in order to repress the um, formation of more diphenyl oxide. This mixture of three components are compressed and then preheated and then taken to a, a reactor where the temperature is 425 degrees centigrade and pressure is 350 atmospheres maintained. Here required a causticizing reaction takes place and then the product mixture would be at higher temperature so that would be passed through heat exchange and the whatever the heat carried by this product mixture is there that would be utilized by the uh, reactants to get preheated uh, and then whatever the temperature reduced product mixture is there that is taken to a neutralizer right. In this neutralizer we are adding HCl that is we are getting from the chlorinator uh, whatever whatever the chlorinator reactor whatever the vent of gases HCl that we are getting that we are using here to neutralize the sodium benzoate so that phenol and then uh, NaCl you may be forming. So the phenol and NaCl you separate here in a separator from the bottom whatever uh, aqueous NaCl is there that you can take as a feed to the electrolysis cell to produce the required uh, chlorine uh, and then HCl etc. from the this electrolysis process itself okay. Whereas the crude phenol whatever is there that is taken to the vacuum column to separate out the heavier diphenyl oxide from the bottom as one of the product. It can be taken as a product and then used for the marketing otherwise it may be recycled back here along with the monochlorobenzene and sodium hydroxide before sending to the causticizing reactor. From the top of the vacuum column primarily you may be having the phenol and then some water would be there. So water vapors etc would be separated out uh, from the vapors and then pure phenol you can get it as a product. Okay? Process description, dry benzene and a catalyst of iron turnings or anhydrous ferric chloride are charged continuously into a chlorinator. Partially chlorinated mixture boils up into a fractionating column. Benzene is fractionated from top and then returns as a recycle while monochlorobenzene is withdrawn near bottom plate of the column. Chlorobenzene and dilute caustic soda 10% solution are mixed in a pump in a mole ratio of 1 to 1.25. Diphenyl oxide about 10 weight percent is added to repress formation of a more diphenyl oxide. Then mixture is pumped through a preheater then to a multi-tube reactor where causticization occurs at uh, 425 degrees centigrade and 350 atmosphere. Residence time is around 15 minutes. Heat is removed from the reactor reflex by heat exchange in feed preheater. Cooled hydrolysate is acidified in a neutralizer to liberate phenol and sodium chloride which must be separated by distillation. Salt is recycled to an electrolysis unit to produce the needed chlorine and then caustic for the process. Phenol is stripped of diphenyl oxide and other minor byproducts in a vacuum. A portion of diphenyl oxide is returned to causticization tower if required, whereas the remainder is redistilled under vacuum for commercial marketing of diphenyl oxide plus other derivatives. Coming to the major engineering problems and alternatives, corrosion from HCl in chlorobenzene unit is important issue to be considered. Then pressure vessel design for high temperature pressure causticization reactor is an issue. Then separation of uh, saleable byproducts, how effectively are you separating them is also important. Economics of process, competitive process it is, it is a competitive process if low cost chlorine is available that is process must be coupled to have an Cl to NaOH process so that economics of integrated plant will apply. Byproduct diphenyl oxide, ortho and para dichlorobenzene and para phenyl phenols must be disposed of properly because of wide applications of chlorobenzene. So that is about the chlorobenzene caustic process to produce the uh, phenol. Now we discuss the phenol production by benzene sulfonate process. If you look at the reactions, first one is the sulfonation where benzene 
reacting with H2SO4 to give the benzene sulfonic acid and water. This benzene sulfonic acid would be undergoing neutralization reaction with uh, sodium sulfite to produce sodium benzene sulfonate along with SO2 and then sodium sulfate. Fusion reaction, this uh, sodium benzene sulfonate would be reacting with uh, sodium hydroxide at 300 degree centigrade to give sodium benzoate along with SO2. This sodium benzoate would be undergoing acidification reaction using H2SO4 and then, H2 and then sulfur dioxide to give phenol along with uh, sodium sulfite and sodium sulfate. These sodium sulfites and sulfates may be recovered and then utilized you know in the pulp and paper industries, uh, sulfate process and then sulfide processes we have seen. So, there this can be utilized. If you can recover them as co-product eff effectively, then you can use them in uh, pulp and paper industries where we have already discussed sulfite and sulfate processes. So, there these chemicals would be utilized. Coming to the quantitative requirements, 1 ton of phenol 85 percent uh, yield if you take as basis, benzene 0 0.96 tons required, 98 percent, 93 to 98 percent H2SO4 is in general used that may be required 1.7 tons and then NaOH 1.65 tons are required. Capacities usually 50 to 150 tons per day plants. Coming to the uh, flow chart, this is the flow chart for the process. What you do? You take the benzene, then preheat it and then take it to the continuous sulfonator reactor. Here the sulfonation of benzene takes place using 93 to 98 percent H2SO4 which is being fed to the reactor from the top. Right. So, this benzene and H2SO4 interacting counter current way, then you get a you know product mixture of a benzene sulfonic acid along with the unreacted uh, benzene and then water vapors etc. So, what you do? You separate out the benzene and then water mixture that you take it to a separator where water is separated out because too much of water is forming. So, that will not allow the you know uh, uh, sulfonation to take place much effectively, right. After separating out the water, whatever the benzene is there that is again mixed with the uh, feed benzene, preheat it and then send it back to the sulfonator reactor. Whatever the uh, benzene sulfonic acid, crude benzene sulfonic acid is there that is taken to a neutralizer where Na2SO3 is being uh, used for the uh, uh, for the uh, required neutralization purpose. In this process what you get? SO2 you get and then you get sodium benzene sulfonate, sodium benzene sulfonate plus SO2 plus Na2SO4 you may be getting after the neutralization process. The SO2 you since it is a vapor you can separate out, since it is a gas it, you can separate out uh, easily, right. Whereas the sodium benzene sulfonate along with Na2SO4 is there that is taken to a pressure filter where Na2SO4 uh, solids are separated out whereas the clear liquors whatever are there they would be compressed and then sent to a uh, fusion reactor where the temperature is maintained uh, 300 degree centigrade. In this reactor this uh, sodium benzene sulfonate is re interacting with the sodium hydroxide to give sodium benzoate sodium benzoate you can get that would be taken to acidifying tower where sodium benzoate is interacting with the dilute H2SO4 along with the SO2 that is being uh, obtained from the neutralization step, right. So, here what happens? You get, you get the uh, product streams right you know uh, phenol, crude phenol plus you know some kind of impurities like Na2SO3, NO2SO4 etc. would also be you may be getting. So, after this acidification tower whatever the heaviest one are there, so they would be taken to a steam stripper where steam is uh, utilized for the uh, separating out the if at all uh, any phenol etc. that is present because this is mostly having the inorganic uh, components. 
plus slight uh, or small amounts of phenol. So that phenol is recovered by the steam stripper and then mixed with the crude phenol whatever you are taking from the top and then that crude phenol is taken to the vacuum steel where wastes are collected from the uh, bottom as a waste whereas the product phenol which is the more volatile compared to the waste that is you get it as top product from the top. Okay? So, partial some, some amount of phenol is also being uh, reflux to the vacuum still until you get the required 99 percent purity of the phenol. Okay? So, whereas the material that is coming out from the steam stripper would be primarily having you know Na2SO4 or the Na2SO3 this kind of components sodium sulphate and then sodium sulphide components would be there. So, these would be taken to a crystallizer after crystallization they will be sent to the centrifuge to remove the waste if at all any, any wastage are present and then you get the pure Na2SO3 as a product that you can feed back to the neutralizer for the required neutralization reaction to take place or you can market it as well. So, this is the process to get a phenol by this you know phenol by benzene sulfonate process. Process description, benzene sulfonic acid is formed by contact of benzene vapors with H2SO4 liquid in a counter current reactor. Excess benzene carries off the water formed in the reaction to avoid diluting the acid and slowing down the sulfonation. Sulfonator is designed so that only a few percent of free H2SO4 remains before the liquid is discharged to the neutralizer. Neutralization is accomplished by rapidly adding the reactor liquor to a solution of sodium sulphide. Sulphur dioxide is released and the pot residue contains sodium benzene sulfonate in solution and precipitated Na2SO4. And this mixture is pressure filtered at the boiling point with the clear solution moving on, on to the batch fusion operation. In the process modification, some plants centrifuge hot liquor, concentrate the sulfonate liquor further by evaporation and then remove more sodium sulphate as well. Cast iron fusion pot containing molten caustic kept at 300 degrees centigrade by direct gas or oil fire. Sulfonate is slowly added at bottoms of the pot and reaction allowed to continue for 5 to 6 hours. Melt is then diluted with water acidified with SO2 from neutralization and then final pH adjusted with the dilute H2SO4. Released crude phenol floats on an aqueous solution containing sodium sulphate, sodium sulphite and small percentage of phenol. Crude phenol is refined via a vacuum distillation column. Aqueous layer is steam distilled to recover more phenol. Part of the salt sludge is used in the neutralization step as well. Balance is sent directly to a paper mill or crystallized and dried to yield anhydrous sodium sulphide for other applications. Coming to the major engineering problems or alternatives, it is the oldest of uh, six processes and operates on large scale batch cycles for all but distillation and sulfonation steps except the distillation and sulfonation steps all other steps are batch steps or batch operating on batch cycles. There is no incentive to switch to a completely continuous operation because of slow reaction rates in the fusion steps. Safety design of fusion cycle is paramount in both addition of aqueous sulfonate to molten NaOH and subsequent water dilution which occurs at end of reaction. Economics of process, presently operating plants are old and fully depreciated and thus cannot compete with the modern processes. Other economic options are to have adjacent or captive NaOH and H2SO4 plants and then be able to utilize or sell all inorganic byproduct salts to nearby plants such as paper mills. Now, the last process uh, phenol production that is by direct oxidation of benzene. Chemical reactions, benzene undergo hydrogenation reaction to produce cyclohexane. This cyclohexane undergo oxidation to produce cyclohexanol, cyclohexanone, this is alcohol, this is ketone and then water. This cyclohexanol further undergo dehydrogenation to produce phenol by releasing H2, right? 
So, process description benzene is hydrogenated to cyclohexane, cyclohexane is then oxidized to produce a mixture of cyclohexanol, cyclohexanone and unreacted cyclohexane. Unreacted cyclohexane is separated and recycled whereas oxygenated fraction is then dehydrogenated to produce phenol over a nickel or platinum catalyst. Major engineering problems though direct oxidation of benzene produces phenol and has been subject of research because of its simplicity. However, the yields were never high to make full scale development. This is one of the important engineering problem. So, this is all about production of phenol by different processes. References for today's lecture are presented here. Thank you.